What's up guys? I'm Morley from Yellround Blog. This is Martha, and today I'm going to show you how I made this kitten size speed bag. <laughs> Martha is the newest addition to the family. My parents adopted him this summer and I met him for the first time when I was home for Thanksgiving. When Martha was a newborn kitten, the owners thought he was a girl, but apparently it's a bit difficult to tell if cats are male or female at such a young age. So my parents were in for a big surprise when they took Martha for his first vet visit and found out she is actually a he. In the end, they decided to stick with the female name and live with the confusion. Martha's preferred method of investigating a new object is wildly batting at it with his paws. When I first saw him doing this, it reminded me of a boxer, and I got the idea to make Martha a scaled down speed bag, because clearly, he doesn't have enough fun with random objects. My plan was to make the speed bag back in Toronto and get it set up when I was back home for the holidays. For the core of the speed bag, I cannibalized a foam die that I got at the dollar store. I was hoping to find something a little closer to that quintessential teardrop shape, but this was the best I could find. I sketched a rough profile of the speed bag on one side of the die and then started carving away with a keyhole saw. The foam cut surprisingly well. I worked my way around the shape, gradually knocking off the sharp corners. Before long, I got bored of sawing foam, so I started wrapping the foam core in masking tape to compress the sharp corners into a rounded surface. Gradually, the foam core developed a pretty smooth and uniform cocoon. The shape didn't have to be perfect at this point since I was also covering the core with leather. The masking tape technique also let me add some bulk to the top of the teardrop shape. My first attempt at making the leather covering was a bit of a failure, and I want to show you why I think it failed. To start, I had to take measurements of the cocooned core to make a template, and I probably rushed this step. My next mistake was using a paper towel as a template. I thought this would work well since paper towel is more flexible than paper, which it is, but it also stretches and is hard to sketch on, which make it a pretty bad template material. And you can kind of see here how I wasn't too diligent about making the template symmetrical. My original idea was to make the leather cover two-toned and to use six total pieces to cover the speed bag. With the pieces cut out, I thought this looked a little corny, but I decided to roll with it. For this first attempt, I used contact cement to attach the covering to the core. This ended up being a big stinky mess. This much contact cement is really pungent, and masking tape covered in contact cement gets real messy real fast. Since my template wasn't great, contact cement was an especially bad choice of adhesive since it gave me zero flexibility to adjust the pieces as I was attaching them. If you've never worked with contact cement, it sticks the moment your two pieces make contact. As I attached more pieces, my errors kept getting magnified. Eventually, I had to just rip the pieces off and start the leather covering from scratch. For the second go around, I was more diligent with my measurements and spent time to make a symmetrical template out of good old paper. I also decided to go with four pieces rather than six to simplify things a bit and kept it to one color. I made sure to keep the pieces a bit undersized, anticipating that I could pull the gaps together with stitching. This time, I kept the pieces taped in a line for attaching them to the core. This made it easier to adjust the leather covering as a single unit. To give myself more room to adjust for error, I used Weldbond to attach the leather pieces to the core. Even though Weldbond requires clamps, it's really tacky, so I was confident things would stay approximately in place while I got the clamps situated. Oh, and by clamps, I mean another cocoon of masking tape. I worked my way around the speed bag, 
using small pieces of tape to pull the gaps closed as much as possible. This worked really well in compressing the leather skin tight around the core. It was super satisfying to remove the tape clamps and see something that looked vaguely like a speed bag. Before stitching between the pieces, I used my awl to punch parallel lines of stitching holes along each gap. I used a baseball stitch to fully close the gaps and stretch the leather covering over the core. This was my first time trying this stitch and I didn't really know what to expect. You set it up like a saddle stitch, with a needle on each end of the thread. As you might be able to tell, this was a really satisfying experience. I was really happy with how effectively the baseball stitch pulled the gaps completely shut. I'm excited to integrate baseball stitching into more projects where I need to pull a piece of leather taut over a surface. I cut a leather circle to hide the gap where the stitches end at the bottom of the speed bag. For a small, precise piece like this, the instant stick of contact cement is perfect. The double-sided strip that I'm making here will form the loop on top of the speed bag. I sanded the edges flush and gave each one a bevel. Before attaching the loop to the speed bag, I applied two coats of black edge coat to each edge, giving a light sanding in between. As with the little leather circle, contact cement works really well for attaching the loop to the speed bag. The top hem on a lot of speed bags forms a kind of lace detail with an extra bit of stitching. I wanted to add this detail for Martha's speed bag. This also provided a way to hide where the loop is attached to the speed bag. I used weld bond here because I knew that positioning this piece would be a little finicky and I needed some flexibility in getting it in the right position. After removing the tape clamps, I was left with two hanging strips of leather. I decided to double these up with contact cement before adding the lacing detail. I punched the stitching holes here so that the lacing would kind of bind and squeeze the hanging strips together. I originally wanted to do the lacing with black paracord, but it was really difficult to pull even my thinnest paracord through the stitching holes and the foam core. So I ended up using black thread. The lacing was thinner than I wanted it to be, but I think it looked good in the end. I put a healthy dab of super glue on the knot and rubbed it in with the head of a nail. With just a couple days to spare before Christmas, the speed bag was finished and I was ready to head home for the holidays, see some friends and family, and build a mount for Martha's speed bag. But before I could do any woodworking, 
I had to figure out the swivel that allows the speed bag to rotate without getting twisted. For that, I enlisted the help of my dad in his tricked out fishing workshop. He had the idea of using some 50 pound test monofilament to attach a fishing swivel to the speed bag. The knot he used here is a, well, I'll let my dad explain. All right, Dad, what type of knot did you use to attach the swivel to the speed bag? I used a double surgeon's knot because I figure if it's good enough to hold somebody's guts in, it's good enough for our little, uh, our, little our little speed bag. Awesome. And for the caboose of this hardware train, I slipped the swivel into a screw eyelet. At this point, Martha got wind of the project and decided to come investigate. I used a nail and some string to trace a circle onto a piece of plywood for the speed bag mount. Martha was a big help here, and he can take full credit for this beautiful uniform circle. No, stop! Shop cats really stop. are a huge help. Oh crap. Martha, stop! Oh my gosh. I used my dad's jigsaw to follow one of the many pencil lines and cut out the circle. Scrounging around my parents' house, I found a can of some probably too nice paint for the mount. The arm of the mount that will support the circle is made from a piece of 1x3. I gave these pieces two coats of paint with a quick 220 grit sanding in between. Once the paint was dry, I did some more scrounging and found a bottle of very old wood glue to assemble the mount. You know, there's something to be said about the random assortment of tools and materials you end up using when you're working in someone else's shop. Like, take this weird hammer for example. This is the only hammer I could find in my dad's shop. I'm positive he has other hammers, but working in an unfamiliar shop, I was fated to find only the strangest hammer he has. Before installing the whole assembly, I added one more coat of paint over the nail heads. My original idea for the speed bag was to mount it low on a wall, but after considering the shin hazard and my parents' new renovation to their house, I decided to mount the speed bag on top of a scratching post. This was the best solution for my parents' house, but it isn't the most stable thing when Martha decides to hop on top. If you decide to make this project, I think mounting it on a wall near a cat tree away from shins would be the best way to go. With the speed bag all mounted, the only thing left to do was start Martha's training to become a champion boxer. It took a bit of coaxing, but it didn't take long for Martha to start boxing with the speed bag on his own. He was also quick to figure out that if he jumps on top, he can get a great view of the room. This led to him discovering the deadliest strategy of all, hanging from the scratching post or sitting on top of the mount to bat at the speed bag. This was a really fun project and a great excuse to spend a ton of time playing with Martha while I was home for the holidays. I'm really happy that he actually boxes at the speed bag like I imagined, but if I were to make this again, I would mount the speed bag on something more stable, since he does seem to really love jumping on top of the mount. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check out the rest of my channel. I have lots of other videos about making all kinds of stuff. If you're interested in directly supporting my projects, check out my Patreon page. I'll link it in the description. Oh, and I should mention, 
even with a fancy new toy, attacking your feet is still Martha's favorite way to play. Tell me doing it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is my cat, Martha. <laughs> Entertain your father. <laughs>